up guys, Josh here. And if you've seen my channel before, I do a lot of headphone and audio related things. And I love being able to explore kind of the latest and the greatest of the audio industry. And my own interest in, I think a lot of other people's tends to extend a little bit beyond that as well. And so once a week, I'm gonna be talking about some other industries and the bleeding edge tech of some other industries. And today we're gonna to start with a mouse. Now, don't worry, this is not gonna be uh, in sacrifice of other audio content. That's still gonna be kind of the regularly scheduled programs. Uh, this is just gonna be additional content. Now, I don't normally ask this, but since we're kind of exploring a new territory, a like, a comment, and a share is very much appreciated. So Logitech G Pro Wireless. This was able to rise to a pretty prominent position in the mouse industry right away, which is kind of surprising given the price range that it was coming in at. And I don't mean prominent as in like it was seen as the pinnacle, which it, for a little bit it kind of was, but I do mean prominent as in there was actually a lot of purchases and there's a lot of people actually using this mouse despite its expensive price tag. And even though it's coming in at $150, which is a lot for a mouse, like really high up there, uh, it does seem like something that people are happy to pay for. And as of right now, there's over 1,300 reviews on this mouse from Amazon. And to compare that to a similarly priced, similarly performing competitor, the Razer Viper Ultimate, which we'll also be doing a review in a little bit, this has almost double the amount of total reviews that the Razer has. And I find this pretty interesting and I kind of want to explore why and what makes the G Pro a really good uh, option for people buying premium priced mice. So the basic question I want to answer is basically, is it worth the hype? I'm gonna start with some things that make this a good mouse on paper. It's gonna be the weight, the sensor, and the wireless tech that they're using inside of it. Now the weight of the G Pro is about 80 grams, which is very light in comparison to some other light speed wireless uh, options from Logitech, like this 603 and this 305. But it's not quite the lightest weight, but still a very lightweight mouse. Um, and then the weight orientation for this thing is actually oriented, at least for where I hold it between my pinky and my thumb, is a little bit tilted towards the back. And when I just pick this up naturally, you can see that it will kind of fall towards the rear a little bit. Now I didn't find this to, to bug me all that much. I actually didn't really seem to mind it and the weight distribution when you're using it seems uh, pretty even compared to the 305, for example, which definitely has a, a very heavy pull towards the back and you definitely notice that more when you're actually using it. But the real stars of the show for this mice are the Hero 16K sensor and the Lightspeed wireless tech. Now the Lightspeed wireless is Logitech's proprietary kind of wireless technology. Uh, it's not shared by any other company, uh, but there is a competitor out there that is ever so slightly better and it's gonna be Razer's Hyperspeed technology. Super creative with the name there, guys. And they came out slightly after uh, Razer's Lightspeed tech. Both actual technologies and the, the functionality of both, in my opinion, are exceptional. So on paper for all of that technical data, you know, it's real close to the top end of stuff. And I think that's one of the things that warrants the price. But I actually don't think that that's the main reason to buy this. I think the main reason to buy this is more of the subjective experience. Now, this is gonna be true with any mouse that I ever talk about and any mouse on the market is a lot of the times ergonomics and the comfort for you and how well you can actually use the mouse based off of those parts is going to be a little bit more important than the sensor tech. For example, this 305, which is like $50 for the Lightspeed Wireless, it's great. You get this really long battery life. You do have to use double A's, but still, it's, it's pretty awesome. This is technically on paper a superior mouse to this Logitech G303, uh, but I can just use this 303 in, it's just so much better for me. Um, just personally, when I'm using it, I can just hit so many more shots more accurately because of the amount of experience I have with this mouse and because it happens to fit my particular hand really, really well. And I just love the ergonomics of this. Logitech, if you're listening, please make a Lightspeed wireless version of this. I will give you all of my money. <laughs> so the shape of this guy, it reminds me of that movie Arrival, the alien ships. It's kind of this lifeless blob type looking thing. <laughs> like it doesn't really have any strong angles or any really distinctive features. Like it kind of just looks like a, like a rounded mouse. And that's exactly what it is. There's nothing really offensive about the fit and the feel of this. 
And uh, I think this is actually a pretty genius move of not really committing to anything and being what I would consider probably good for just about everybody. But I think in general, most people are gonna be, uh, I think they're gonna find this an acceptable shape while maybe not gonna be the pinnacle for that person specifically. So because of the design shape that is kind of ambidextrous one and also safe, for just about all grip styles, I think it's a good option for most people. So you can have a palm grip or a claw grip or kind of a hybrid or even a fingertip grip and you're gonna have a very good experience being able to use this in all those different styles. So I think from Logitech's perspective, this is a really good option and I think was actually a, a smarter move than what Razer decided to do with the more aggressive approach that kind of forces your hand into one particular kind of style because of the slightly elongated back. The G Pro has a little bit more of an arch towards the back, which makes it a little bit more comfortable for the claw grippers, whereas it kind of leaves claw grippers like me a little bit wanting on the Viper. Although I have a lot more to say about the Viper in a future video. Another thing that I consider to be pretty class leading for this mouse is gonna be most of the buttons. And I'll do a sound test here for all the buttons. Now, one of my first like more high-end gaming mice was the G502. And from that mouse forward, I've always felt that Logitech has some of the best buttons in the industry, especially for the primary right and left clicks. Um, and then this mouse is no different, pretty much immediate actuation. It's got a, a decent amount of resistance that makes you not accidentally click it, but it's a very satisfying click when you finally do decide to click. On the primary buttons, there's almost no pre-travel. And then on the side buttons, it's kind of the same. They seem to actuate very quickly and there's not a whole lot of pre or post travel, which is good to see. Now in terms of buttons, the mouse wheel is really the one and only thing that I have any complaints about. Uh, the scrolling is great. It's got distinctive steps that aren't too hard or too loud, like not a whole lot of loudness. You know, that's hard scrolling, but uh, the click down is a little stiff and it doesn't really feel very easy to access or natural for me compared to some other mice. Uh, it doesn't really click down that easily. Okay, and then one of the last bits of ergonomics that I really enjoy about this mouse is the removable side buttons. And I think this is a huge win on their front because not only are the side buttons removable, which cannot be said for that Viper Ultimate, uh, they are individually removable. So you don't have to remove a whole side and slap uh, you know, a whole cover piece on. Not everybody's gonna care that much, but I care because I actually use a three side button setup. So on the front of the right side, the, the ring finger side, I actually have that front button removed and just replaced with the, co the cover for it. And I do tend to use that for certain auxiliary buttons. Now, because of the way that the mouse is designed, I find for my hand, uh, the buttons to be perfectly out of uh, out of the way, but very easy to access. Now for the Viper, I actually find the buttons to be a little bit too far out of the way. And uh, while I do appreciate that for gameplay, when I do want to click those side buttons, uh, they are occasionally hard to find. And so I don't end up using them as much as I use them on the G Pro. Okay, now I wanna talk about some minor complaints and some things that I wish would be changed in some future generations. So the curves for your pinky and thumb area uh, could be a little bit more swept in my opinion that would assist with picking this up just a little bit easier uh, They are pretty subtle and they are slightly curved But I, I wish they would just go a little bit more not overkill just a little bit more and the same thing with the finger indents on the primary clicks I feel like they could have gotten away with a little bit more of an indent um, And it would be a little bit more comfortable because as of right now your fingers kind of feel like they're instead of sitting uh, kind of more straight they feel like they're kind of almost bulging because it's almost a slightly rounded feel to the top. It's it's kind of weird at first, um, and going from some other Logitech mice, it was a bit of an adjustment period. Now, another thing is the two primary buttons, I think are too close together in the front, and depending on how you're implementing the pressure of your fingers, I feel like these could actually rub together over time. Like, that doesn't sound all that good, does it? And I feel like they should have left a little bit more of a gap between both buttons and they'd probably actually save a little bit of weight too. Uh, this is kind of unfair of me to judge because it's a completely different system, but going from something like the G305, which has very, very, very long battery life, but it uses AA or AAA batteries with a, a slight modification to it, um, 
This just lasts significantly longer. You do pay for the batteries, yes, but it does last significantly longer without a recharge than the G Pro. Like really, really long. Like you're talking about like quite a few months, but this will get you about 48 to 60 hours, which is very, very good. And for a small lightweight battery, that's definitely very good. Uh, but if you're coming from something that lasts a lot longer, it is a little bit of a system shock going to uh, a battery that you then have to worry about plugging in every few days. And as battery tech gets better and future generations of mice come in, I see this problem being fixed relatively easily. Now the performance is the last thing I wanna talk about, but it's also the most difficult because I feel like most premium mice nowadays outperform their users in most circumstances, including myself. I feel like this is a far more capable mouse than I could ever take advantage of, but this isn't the only mouse that is like that. There's tons of mice out there that are very, very capable. And I feel like it's the things like grip and battery life and even the look and just, you know, all that, that extra stuff that really makes you kind of think, okay, whether or not this mouse is worth it. So what I can say for sure about performance is that for me, this has definitely outperformed heavier mice like the 603 and the, the 305. Uh, it's just, it's a much better feeling of control. Now for me, there are mice that I feel much better and much more accurate with. The Viper Ultimate is actually one of them. I feel like this is a much more capable mouse in my hands than the G Pro is, although the G Pro is, is really close up there. But it doesn't necessarily seem to be only about getting a lighter weight mouse, which is what this is. I'm also far better with this G303. And this is an older mouse, and I'm just really, really familiar with it, and it fits my hand in such a way that I can just use it uh, very, very well. Uh, but that's just me, and I think we're all going to have their mice. And I do think that the G Pro is going to be a good contender for most people. And I think that the asking price, while high and while definitely a premium price, I think it's deserving of that price range. Would I like to see it lower? Of course I would. But I think that $150 is, you know, maybe not the ideal price range for it, but I do think it's a fair asking price for the G Pro Wireless. So, that's gonna wrap it up. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below, what reviews you would like to see me do. I'm not just gonna be doing mice, by the way. I'm gonna be doing keyboards and some other desk peripherals that we're talking about in those future videos. And if you're looking forward to that, please subscribe and uh, definitely like the video and comment if you can. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off. <laughs>